Greetings, I'm the Reverend Russell Martin, and I'm the Protestant Chaplain at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego, California. I bring you greetings for a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year, even as I'd like to take a moment and offer you just a moment of reflection on the coming of the wise man to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But before I begin, let me start with a prayer. O oh God, by the leading of the star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In Matthew chapter 2, we read of the wise men coming to see Jesus. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is to be born king of the Jews. For we saw the star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him and assembled all the chief priests and the scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea. So it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them the time that the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I may too come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it had rose and went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. So my friends, what we see is we see these wise men... These astrologers who had been reading the signs of the heavens, they had been looking to heaven to reveal the glory of God. And in that search, they saw this great star, which had risen, and they took note of that, feeling perhaps that it had denoted the birth of a great person. And so they wanted to see whom this star was important or signed for. And so they began searching. And we don't know exactly how long they had to search or how long they had to travel until they got to Bethlehem. But before they get to Bethlehem, where the star finally arrives over the place where Jesus was, they go to Herod, who is the king at that time in Israel. And of course, he's a Roman puppet. And so they ask him, you know, where's the king of the Jews? We want to come. We want to worship him. We want to pay him our respects. This, of course, makes Herod a little nervous because who are these men coming out of the east with such gifts and such um, a procession? And, and, and to give these gifts... Um, when he himself is the king. So he has a scheme that he hatches that, that he would instead try and get them to tell him where the Christ child was. He was afraid that he would lose his own power for the true king of the Jews. And so there they go. They search. And after a long time, we know they get to the, the child there and there the star awaits. And what happens when they see Jesus? They see the star, the sign of heaven, pointing to that place where that child is, and they go, and the first thing they do is experience joy. You see, that's part of the gift that we have at Christmas, is the joy of receiving and seeing Jesus, the King of heaven who's been born on earth. And what do they do they, in this joy? They fall down on their knees, they present them with these gifts, and they worship him. You know, a few words about these wise men. They were astrologers, as I said, that had come from East, maybe Babylon or Persia, and they traveled a great distance, and they brought gifts to someone who they thought was probably a great king. And in fact, Jesus is not a great king of just the earth. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and the prince of peace. He is God is with us. And so what do they do? They present these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And in that very picture of presenting those three gifts, we see the fullness of who Jesus is in his life and his ministry. Gold, a gift for a king, Jesus as king. Frankincense, incense that would be used at the temple to offer um, worship and glorify God and sacrifices. And then myrrh, that which was used to prepare a body for burial. And so in that we see Jesus as king, we see Jesus as the high priest, 
and we see Jesus as the sacrificial lamb, the paschal lamb that was sent into the world to bear the sin of the world. And so my message to you, my friends, is that unless we receive Jesus as the king of the cradle, we can't fully appreciate and receive him as the king who conquers the cross and who brings eternal life. And so this season of Christmas is an opportunity for us to, like the wise men, have our eyes open, maybe first by looking at what God has done in creation, and then finally as we settle on the face of a child who is a king, not because we declare him king, but because God birthed him to be king of kings. And so I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I'd like to close by praying again. Almighty God, you have poured upon us a new light of your incarnate word. Grant that in this light it may be kindled in our hearts and may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, ever after. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessings.